Alright, picking up with part three of our CCNA CCNP Ether Channel webinar. And here we're going to start building the Ether Channel. And on switch one, what we need to do is put each one of these ports into the Ether Channel. But one oddity about working with Ether Channels is that when you're creating it, you never type in the word Ether Channel. It's an odd little command. And we'll start here on FASTO 10. We are not even going to type the word ether channel in until we're actually verifying what we've done. And here you can see the command is actually channel group. And you're going to need to put this on each port that you want to put into the ether channel. And we've got a channel group number we've got to select. We'll be dull and just pick one. <laughs> but uh, obviously that's got to be the same for every port here that we want in this particular ether channel. You have to actually type the word mode in here. And then we'll use iOS help to look at our options. And I, as always, I urge you to use iOS help in your practice, even when you know the command, because it will show you your other options as well. Now, for you CCNP candidates watching this, I think it would be a good idea for you to take your study a little further and look into what LACP and PAGP are. There are Ether Channel negotiation uh, protocols, but you need to know the differences between the two. It definitely couldn't hurt. CCNA candidates, CSENT candidates, I would not uh, concern myself with that. And what we're going to do here is use the option on. And you see the little message creating a port channel interface, port channel one. And let me type this other in. And I'll just use my up arrow to repeat. And if you're thinking there's even a faster way to put this command into all three ports, you're right. We'll talk about that in a moment. And I'll just go ahead and do a quick save there. And you'll notice the little message here about some interface port channel changing state to up, creating a port channel interface, port channel one, and then a line protocol going up. Well, again, when you look at your configuration, you're not going to see anything that says interface ether channel one. It's actually called a port channel, and that is simply the logical representation of the ether channel. Remember that these, this is not an interface that physically exists. It's like a loopback interface. It's a logical interface. It does not physically exist. If you go to the back of the switch, you're not going to see anything that says port channel 1. And let me show you where you would expect to see that. Oh, and we got a whole lot of messages there all of a sudden, didn't we? And I'm glad that happened because this is an error that is fairly common when you're building an ether channel, especially the first time you're doing it. It's going to be good exam review for you. I'm going to have another question there for you in a moment. A little audience participation. But also, I rarely, if ever, see this in any book. But I wanted you to see it. It's one of the joys of working with live equipment. That interface port channel 1 there, you're seeing that that is the logical representation of the ether channel. So interface port channel 1, again, it's a logical interface. It does not physically exist. Now, let me ask all the Bulldogs out there something. I know that you've seen another switching feature, a Cisco switching feature, that has something like ERR disable in it. Do you remember what that is? There's another switching feature that does that to a port. Take a moment to think about that. Yeah, what is that? It's port security. Remember the uh, the three modes of port security? And shutdown is the default. And when a port is shut down by port security, it's actually put into this ERR disable, which is just short for error disabled. The reason we're seeing it here is not any kind of port security violation, because frankly, I don't have any port security running on this uh, particular switch. The reason we're seeing that is that one side of each of these three trunks is now set for an ether channel, excuse me, for an ether channel, but the other side is not. And that's where you end up with what we call a channel misconfiguration error. The other reason I want to show this to you, and again, I pride myself on never forgetting what it's like to start with your Cisco studies. I know there's a little anxiety built in, especially when you're working with the live equipment. And you can be working right along, and all of a sudden you see all these messages stream out. And frankly, it's real easy to panic. <laughs> you know, I've been there. You go, oh, man, what in the world did I just do? And it's, it, it happens to every single one of us. In a production network, in a lab environment, it happens to every single one of us. And I just want to remind you, whether it's in the exam room or you're working on a production network or in your lab, just stay calm. 
because when you get this many messages or even just one message the router or the switch is basically telling you what's going on it's not like um, error messages from certain other vendors where they give you some kind of 57 character hexadecimal <coughs> Microsoft and then you go out to the uh, out to their support page and it says oh that error doesn't exist uh, Cisco error messages are not always totally clear but this one is very clear about what just happened if this happens to you in the middle of an ether channel build just go ahead and finish your ether channel build and then come back to these ports and shut them down and then reopen them that's all there is to it and we're actually going to do that live so let's see what we've got here I'll actually show you what that looks like on one of the interfaces and this is what you have to look out for because you know in your CCNA studies in particular you learn a lot of different combinations here you know what does it mean when a port is up but the line protocol is down etc when you have a message like this and let's review that for a moment when you have a message like this you're actually being told what the physical state of the interface is and what the logical state of the interface is and if you see a situation where this part says the interface is up but then the line protocol is down that means there's a logical issue somewhere you know you can have that with a missing clock rate uh, you can have that with an LMI mismatch in frame relay there are a couple of different ways you can end up with that combination but when you see ERR disabled here that means that something has happened that has forced that port to be shut down and what you need to do first of course is fix that issue and then secondly come back to the switch and shut the port down and reopen it and then hopefully everything will be fine so again we get to test that live here today what we will do now then is go ahead and finish our ether channel configuration we'll go over to switch 2 now let me ask the group something here all the bulldogs out here because you better know this one let's say that you go into a job interview with some uh, mean crusty old son of a gun like I don't know me and um, I put you in front of a Cisco switch and it's a 48 port switch and I say I need you to change the speed on all of these ports uh, to 10 mag and you say okay I can do that do you really want to be typing in you know interface fast 01 and then the speed and then going to interface fast 02 and then type in the speed yeah no, no, no you do not want to do this I'm going to show you a little command that you really need to be handy with for your exam and it will come in handy in the real world as well and that is the interface range command it can be a little tricky at first a little frustrating because there's just one little gotcha in there but just go with me on this you will be glad you learned this command sooner or later it's interface range and then you just type in whatever interface type it is it's going to be fast ethernet but I'll just type fast then you need to type in the range and this is what I still do sometimes I'll type that in and say well wait a minute you know 0, 10 through 12 that's what I wanted to do well thank heaven for this little carrot right here because it always shows you where you went wrong you know and in this particular instance it's saying you did fine until you got to this point what you've got to do there is leave a space it's just one of those little things and now whatever I type in here is going to be applied to all the interfaces in that range and you can use commas you know to put in non sequential uh, port numbers it's a great command you'll really be glad that you learned this and now I just have to type that one time and for those of you who hate to type that can save you a lot of typing so what we're going to do here is I'm going to pause this uh, pause the webinar here for just a moment uh, and for YouTube purposes since we're heading for the 10 minute mark and I'll see you over on part four and we'll take a look at switch one and see what we need to do to get that ether channel up and running from here right back at you